a little bit about soap. I have a new order from a new supplier. Uh, they're a very popular supplier. I just haven't ordered from them before. They're called Voyager Soap. They are in Canada. Um, and I'm going to uh, open up what I ordered and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, why I got some of the uh, ingredients or materials that I got. And uh, yeah. So normally I order from Candora or Canwax. That's who I've ordered from before. And um, this time, one of them, the their website wasn't working. And then the other one, uh, the shipping costs to ship out here were like 50% of what my cart total was. So I decided to try out Voyager. The shipping cost was a lot more reasonable. So I had to do basically a full restocking of my oils. And, and then I got a bunch of sample, uh, small sample um, fragrances. tub of beef tallow. So tallow is one of the um, the main um, oils that I use in my soaps. I like tallow because um, it's fairly inexpensive and it has really nice properties for soap. It makes them really nice and creamy and soft um, and uh, so I like using that a lot. And then I have coconut oil. It's another really great one to use. It's a very common use in soap. Um, you can't use more than about 25 to 30% of your oils as coconut oil, um, or else it can actually be quite drying, which is not what I want for my soaps. Um, so I do use about, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, 20% of the soap of the oils that I use is coconut oil. All right. And then this one, this is the first time that I've ordered palm oil. Palm oil is very commonly used in soap making, whether by people at home just like myself um, or in what you buy from the store. But it's also a controversial oil. So palm oil is uh, palm oil is used in soaps, but it's also in a lot of food products from the grocery store. And to harvest palm oil, there is um, huge ecological effects. So it's it's responsible, the harvesting of palm oil is responsible for deforestation of primarily orangutan habitat, which is the biggest, probably the biggest um, animal that's affected by it, but it's a hugely biodiverse uh, ecosystem that is just demolished for harvesting palm oil, which is why I've never used it. So what I replace it with is the beef tallow. That though, makes my soaps not vegetarian and not vegan. I still like it, I still use it, um, but there are lots of people in my life who are vegetarian or vegan who I'd love to be able to gift my soaps to, and I haven't been able to because my soaps have beef towel in them. So what I did, um, I'm just gonna try it out, but I did order palm oil, but I found that Voyager offers certified sustainable palm oil. So it is not contributing to that um, irreversible deforestation. I'm gonna look into it a bit further just to make sure that when it says certified sustainable, what that actually means. Um, but I'm gonna give it a go and then that way I can make um, some soaps without the beef tallow uh, for the people that I love who can't use beef tallow. And then I have 12 fragrance oils and sample sizes. So each one of these is about $4 Canadian, uh, and you get uh, one fluid ounce. So this one is Hefenweizen Beer Fragrance Oil. Oh yeah, that, that really smells like beer. Yule and Pine Fragrance. Oh, that one's really nice. The first whiff I didn't get any pine, and after that I'm getting lots of pine. But it's almost got like a sweetness to it as well. This one's called Enchanted Smudge. That one's got some pine too. Hmm, that one's interesting, that one's really nice. It's hard to explain though. It's that 
Satsuma. Yeah, that smells like Satsuma. I love the Satsuma fragrance from like Bath and Body Works, so I got that. Ooh, that one's nice. Watermelon lemony. Yeah, so that's what it smells like. That's got watermelon with like a like a sweet lemon scent in it. And sunflower. Ooh, that one's really light. I probably have to open that one up, but that's a nice one too. Lemongrass. I have a lemongrass essential oil which I use in bath bombs, but I don't like using essential oils in soaps because I don't find that the essential oil scent lasts through the saponification process. French lavender. Yeah, so that one smells like lavender. I have to open that one up too. It smells really light. They're all um, sealed with electrical tape so they don't leak. Vanilla bean marshmallow. Oh, that one smells good. Whew, that smells really good. So one's bergamot and fur. That one's quite similar to the Yule and Pine. Bourbon and sandalwood. This one I'm slightly afraid I'll be allergic to because I'm allergic to patchouli and I know a lot of things with sandalwood tend to be <laughs> I got some nice summer ones like the sunflower and satsuma and vanilla, watermelon lemonade. So that'll be fun. So I'm really excited to try those out. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about um, recipes, soap recipes. So I have found that in the soap making communities, the recipes that people use are highly guarded. Um, people don't share the recipes. Um, if they do, you have to buy them. From them um, and I get it if you're if you're selling your soaps that's your proprietary recipe um, but it can be kind of a like a gateway barrier to starting soap making so what I'm gonna do is in the, in the description below I'm gonna link soap calc which is what I use to determine what my recipes are gonna be and you can see all the different properties of um, what that combination of oils is gonna look like and um, and you can play around with that and figure out like what do you have in your house, what you need to order, um, and what kind of combinations you can use to make your own recipes. Um, what I use uh, primarily in mine, like I mentioned, is uh, coconut oil, beef tallow, shea butter, um, and olive oil. Olive oil is cheapest if you get it from your grocery store. Um, any olive oil is fine. Um, I do like to use the cheaper olive oils, not for the price point, but because they're lighter. I find like the olive oil, um, this is like the kind that I use for cooking. It's a higher quality oil and therefore it's more yellow and it will make your soaps yellow as well. Whereas if you just get one of the big, they come in like little like drums, like the size of olive oil from the grocery store. They're cheaper, but they're also a lot lighter um, and they won't discolor your soaps as much. So in the description below, I will put the link to Voyager Soap, which is where I got these um, and the fragrance oils. I'll also link Candora and Canwax, which are the ones that I have used before and I do like their quality. Um, so unfortunately, um, like I mentioned, the website was down on one of them and uh, the shipping was just too much to ship out here this time. Um, but back at our other house, um, the shipping was quite reasonable. The other thing that I got in the mail today was seeds from Halifax Seed. So I'm very excited for spring. It's currently flurries outside right now and very windy. Um, and I cannot wait for spring. So I got lots of Scotia tomatoes. They're a variety that is um, specially um, uh, suited to our climate here. And we use a lot of tomatoes every year. So this year I'm going to make sure that I have lots of tomatoes including um, some 
cherry tomatoes as well. I also got loofah. I haven't grown loofah gourds before, uh, but I want to give it a go because then I can use them um, in loofah soaps. So I can either put them actually directly in the soap itself or um, as an addition on the side and you can grow our own loofah. So I'm pretty excited for that one. And then just your regular, I got uh, peppers, broccoli, zucchini, watermelon, baby spinach, the other kind of pepper, eggplant, cucumber, celery, fennel, tomatillos. I'm excited for those as well. I really love uh, making salsa with tomatillos. Pumpkin pie pumpkins, jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, leeks. Uh, this one's lemon cucumber. I haven't seen these before, um, and I guess they are a hybrid, and they look like little lemons. I'm not sure if you can see that, um, but they are actually cucumbers, so that one's going to be interesting. Uh, sweet corn, asparagus. We eat a lot of asparagus, um, but A, it's kind of pricey, um, and uh, B, I want to give it a go. The thing is with asparagus, is it's like rhubarb. You can't harvest it for the first two years. Um, by the third year, you can grow it. So um, hopefully I can find a spot where I can plant these and then just leave them alone for a couple years before we can harvest our full asparagus. Brussels sprouts, uh, lettuce, onions, jalapeno peppers, and green onions. If you don't have a lot of garden space, there are a lot of uh, vegetables that you can grow um, or continue growing just in your home. For example, I have green onions from the grocery store in a vase with some water in the bottom. They'll stay alive like that a lot longer than if you leave them in your fridge. And when you cut off the ends, they've got a little root on them, you cut off the end, but this, this much, and you can put it in a pot of water, like a little bowl of water, or um, in a little pot with um, soil on your windowsill, and it will regrow, and you can snip it off, and it'll regrow. They'll grow back a little bit thinner, um, but that is also an option um, that you can do to continually have green onions without having to continually buy them. I also got um, a lot of seed packets from a good friend of mine who uh, mailed a whole bunch of seed packets, uh, mostly flowers, which I'm really excited about because I didn't put <laughs> didn't put um, flowers into my uh, my seed order. So luckily we'll, we got those and we'll be able to have lots of different um, flowers growing around the property, which will be great for um, the bees that hopefully we'll be getting next year as well. If you have any questions about soap making at home, uh, you can definitely ask me. I'm not an expert. I haven't been doing it for very long, um, but when I do find a new hobby, I do tend to dive in head first. So um, if you have any questions, I can uh, help you out with that. Um, like I mentioned, I will link soap calc in the description. Um, if you need help kind of interpreting those results, I can help a little bit with that as well. And uh, if you make any soaps, uh, I'd love to see them. Uh, you can send them to me through our uh, Facebook page, Hauling Acres Homestead on Facebook uh, or on Instagram, with the same name. And I'd love to see what you make. We've been doing some uh, minor renovation stuff this week. Um, I didn't get any of it on film because I didn't think about that when we were doing it. But we did take out a closet upstairs. Um, we just found that we didn't need the closet in the master bedroom. Um, we've been using one of the bedrooms as a walk-in closet, which also has a closet on it. Um, so this way we moved all of our stuff into that room and are using that as our um, big, big closet. And then we tore out the um, existing closet and, um, and took out the wallpaper and we'll be repainting that and fixing that up. And it just, it gave us an extra two feet um, of space in the bedroom, which makes a big difference when you have big dog beds and a big bed. We have a king size bed um, mainly because uh, the dogs like to sleep with us and they're enormous and on a queen it just wasn't feasible. It's barely feasible on a king <laughs> so uh, we have the king size bed in there and it was we didn't have too too much space on either side um, so we're taking out that closet gave us it makes a huge difference for space in there um, but yes unfortunately I didn't get that on film uh, but any future projects, we will do that. We got some nice lumber out of the closet uh, because of the, uh, the, the, the two by fours in the frame. Um, so we are saving everything we can from that um, to repurpose. And uh, hopefully we'll find something that we can do with that soon. But for now, it's cold outside. It's uh, The temperature's not bad, but it's very windy. And we got some sleet the other day, so everything is just covered in ice. So I think uh, we'll spend some time inside 
I'm going to try out my new uh, fragrance oils and see what I can make with that. Um, for pictures of that, again, you can follow us on Instagram or Facebook. And I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you're excited about for spring. What kind of seeds are you guys uh, looking forward to getting? What are you planting this year? Um, yeah, and that's it for me today. So I'll see you later. Thanks for joining us.